What's up there SEO pros? Welcome back. A lot of you have been asking me, how do I do SEO without having any money or without having a budget? So I know there's a lot of expensive tools out there and a lot of people who do SEO or getting started doing SEO can't really afford an 800, sorry, an $189 subscription to something like Ahrefs or maybe buying Screaming Frog for $200 for the pro license. So there's all these different tools you can buy online. And today I'm going to be telling you how I was able to start out doing SEO for free and how you can do SEO without any tools. And I'm going to explain to you why you don't necessarily have to use tools in order to be successful doing SEO and why tools can be a helpful thing for you and having a budget for SEO can be helpful, but it's not completely necessary in order to do well. A lot of the sites that I started out with ranking, I did all by myself without any money. I wrote all the content myself. I did all the design myself. I ranked it with only zero dollars. So before we get started, I do want to share with you guys, I created this ultimate free SEO resource. It's something I've been spending a lot of time on so that you guys can use it. So let me actually show you. I'll screen share this with you so you can see it. Let me bring my face down and then I'll do my screen share. So here we go. So this free resource here, you can see we got a bunch of different things in here. We got um, the top SEO template themes. We got a tab for all the best SEO tools, um, different books you can read on SEO, different SEO videos that I recommend, uh, different ways to get SEO clients with tutorials next to those, um, bunch of different YouTubers to follow. So I'm trying to create this list right now to be sort of the ultimate list for SEO. So if you want to be able to get this, I actually have it on my website now. Um, you can go to the link I will leave in the description. I'll also put it in live chat. And you can go ahead and download it for free. I'm not charging anything for it. Normally I would try to charge for something like this, but I'm trying to give out as much free value as possible so you guys can kind of be able to do this stuff without needing to pay a lot of money. And if you do end up having more money in the future and you really want to take your game to the next level, your SEO game, um, I really do recommend you check out the uh, SEO Pro Bundle, which is everything that I've ever made course-wise, about 100 hours of video and lessons for about $6.97 right now for this limited time. Um, one other thing I do want to tell you guys, sorry to sound like a walking advertisement, but we do have a new local SEO program that is closing soon. And we're closing it in six days. Basically what this is, it's kind of like SEO University. So what we're doing is we're actually uh, going to be doing live lessons for you guys with homework so you can actually watch this course on how I actually generate two, two to three thousand dollar a month SEO clients every month. I generate about two to three new SEO clients locally every month with these methods. I'm going to be showing you, you know, how I generate leads, how I sell the audits, how I implement the SEO game plan, how I rank for my keywords, how I sell my packages over you know ongoing retainers. I'm gonna be showing you what I'm actually selling um, to clients um, in real time. So I, what it actually looks like to be on a phone call with them. Uh, invoicing, figuring out your audit layout, all the stuff that you're gonna to wanna to learn in order to be really skilled at SEO and local SEO specifically. I'm gonna be doing a live class training where you guys are actually gonna go in, you're going to watch all this stuff and you're gonna be able to ask me questions in real time and it's almost gonna be like a, a school environment where you're gonna be able to um, take what I'm teaching you, sort of get an assignment around it and then actually come back with results. So um, if you already have the bundle that I mentioned a second ago, you can always go to buy course and select the 147. This is for anybody who already has the bundle and um, it's just kind of an add-on to the bundle. Um, if you don't, you can get it for 297, just this alone, if you're not interested in the full package. So. Again, that's only if you have money. So if you don't have money and you're looking to get started <coughs> doing SEO and you don't have <coughs> any sort of budget, I'm going to show you exactly how you're going to go about doing this. <coughs> Sorry, that just went down the wrong windpipe. All right, so first thing you want to do <coughs> is you want to figure out what you want to rank for, obviously. So with everything that I do here, um, I always start out. <coughs> I always start out with my notepad. And... If you can actually have an environment where you have, um, you know, like a whiteboard in the background or, you know, over here on the other side of your room, so you can look at it all day. I actually um, just moved my house to a new house. I just moved to a new house. 
And I had a whiteboard uh, in my office where every single day I would look at the whiteboard and I go, okay, this is what I have to do. So first thing that you really want to do is you want to figure out how you can, um, you know, get something that you can actually draw and something you can write your ideas out. It feels better to actually write ideas out than it is to write them on a notepad on here. I actually don't get as much out of that. So one of the first recommendations I want to make for anybody, obviously it's going to cost like 10 bucks or whatever to get a little whiteboard for your wall. But first thing you want to do is you want to have a whiteboard that you can look, look at every single month or every single day. And what I always do is I, I, I put out my monthly goals and I always start out with how much money I want to make every month. So uh, last month I made a goal. I want to make 20,000 with course sales. This month I want to make 25K. Um, by the way, last month I wound up actually making 27K. So everything wound up great. Now, what you're going to do is after you kind of figure out your goals, and I know this isn't really SEO related, but I do want to talk about sort of the business side of it because look, if you don't have a, a vision on what, how much money you want to make, SEO isn't really going to help you out a lot. Like you want to figure out what your actual end goal is besides just ranking. You want to figure out, okay, how is that ranking going to actually help me? So what I do is I go, okay, if I want to make 25 K, I want to think about what do I have to do to get to that point? And I make this reasonable, right? I try to stretch this a little bit. So if I'm only making a, you know, one K a month, then my goal will probably be like, okay, now I want to make 2K. Because the idea is that you want to take whatever you're doing right that's making you money, and then you want to add more time into that. You want to add, try to maybe tweak it a little bit, try to adjust it. So if I make 25K this month, um, or that's my goal, then I'm going to be thinking, okay, what is the thing that I need to do in order to make that money? So I know I need to make a new program, just like that local university program I was talking about. I know I need to start um, investing in content like I do every month. I spend about $500 to $1,000 a month on content. And I know I need a couple clients so I can use them as case studies so I can uh, sell more programs. So, uh, and on top of that, obviously the new checklist I'm making, which is the ultimate SEO resource. So that's sort of my outline. Now, the reason why I know this works for me is because I've already got this sort of layout to work before. So I'm trying to add new things to it. If you've never done this before, don't replicate what I'm doing. One of the big things that you want to learn about when you're starting out doing SEO, doing marketing, doing whatever you're doing online, don't take what other people are doing and then just completely replicate it. You want to find what other people are doing well and then try to use that as an outline for what something, what's something that you can do, but in your own unique way. So all of this philosophical stuff aside, let's kind of go more into the SEO realm. So. Welcome everybody in chat, by the way. Welcome Will, welcome Gustavo, welcome Banfield, welcome Luke. By the way, this is a live stream. I do almost all of my videos live. So if you're not in this live stream right now, you're watching this video later, make sure you send me a message on Facebook um, or get on my Discord channel or you know, subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you can get actually notified when I do these streams so you don't miss out and you can actually ask questions. Like you guys in chat right now, feel free to ask me any questions you want. Um, my dog's going nuts in the background right now. So <clears throat> going back to this. So uh, one thing that we want to do after we figure out what our goals are is we want to figure out what is the um, SEO goal. So we got our, we got our, our monetary goals. Now we want to figure out what our SEO goal is. So if you don't have any rankings, like if you're brand new, and you're not making any money. First thing you want to do, obviously, besides picking up the SEO roadmap checklist, which is on the site, and this is going to just let you conduct audits on people's websites. The first thing you want to do is you want to build a case study. Like no matter what, if you could do anything right and you don't have any money, you want to get a website up that you can rank locally because locally is usually easier to rank for lower keyword difficulty. You want to rank locally for something and you want to uh, use that as a way to get into lead gen for whatever the industry is that you're targeting. So let's say you want to have iPhone repair clients, or let's say you want to have acupuncturists as your clients. And you might be thinking, well, I don't know which clients I want. I just want all of them. But that's the, the honest truth that I'm going to tell you right now is you don't want every single client. You want to have clients that you already know about their niche a little bit. You want to know about their industry. You want to know how their marketing works, how they make money, because then you're going to be able to scale what you're doing faster. The less you know about something, less you know about a certain subject or niche, the harder it is to scale whatever that thing is because you know less about it. Does that make sense? By the way, give me a one in chat if I sound okay, if there's anything wrong with my audio, if you guys have any questions, just give me a one in chat right now if there's anything that, um, well, give me a one in chat if everything sounds good and give me a two in chat if you have a question or anything. So 
what I do is I do a search. Now, if you don't have any money, don't use this method because what I'll do is I'll go to Ahrefs and I'll actually type in the keywords that I'm looking to rank for locally. Like so, I'll go to Content Explorer, I'll type in SEO or let's say it's iPhone repair in, you know, let's say a town that you're in, Santa Barbara. This is actually a keyword that I ranked for a while back. I sold this site for about $3,000. <clears throat> and unfortunately, I just went to Content Explorer. You need to go to Keyword Explorer. So you put this in, you can see here, it's a pretty easy difficulty. Now, if you don't have money for Ahrefs, how are you gonna do that? You know, you, you're not gonna be able to find the keyword difficulty. So a different way to do this is actually to go to um, Keyword Planner. So you go to Google Keyword Planner. Now you're not gonna really see the keyword difficulty. So I'm gonna have to show you two ways to kind of gauge this. So you're gonna sign in to whatever your Google account is and I think you might have to sign up with your card before you can see the keyword planner. I'm not sure, but I know you don't have to spend money. <clears throat> so you're gonna go to tools, you're gonna go to keyword planner, and looks like we're already there. Sorry, the layout always changes. And we're gonna type in iPhone repair Santa Barbara. So same keyword, we'll press get results. And here we can see it says low competition. Now this is one way to gauge it. Unfortunately, when it says low competition, that just means people competing on AdWords. So it's not really a great way to gauge it, but it is a kind of a good way. It's not as accurate as KD, but it is somewhat accurate. So you can see, oh, it's not too hard to probably rank for it because not a lot of people are willing to spend money on it. So a lot of people are probably not also putting a lot of it, uh, money in SEO for it. Now the other way, this is the better way to do it. It's called eyeballing. And this is what you're gonna be doing with a lot of your SEOs. You're gonna be eyeballing your uh, rankings. And this actually works really well. I still do eyeballing even with these tools because I wanna see that the tool isn't lying to me. The tool is only supposed to be a way for you to kind of get a faster, more accurate approach when you're scaling, meaning that when you're doing bulk tasks, like finding a huge list of keywords, it's supposed to give you a better idea by looking at a bulk list. However, if you're only looking at five to 10 keywords, then it's not always the best thing. Tools are really meant to streamline what you're doing. They're meant to help you scale. They're meant to help you automate. They are not meant to help you rank. I mean, they are meant to help you rank in a certain in a certain extent, but what I'm saying is that your the real way to rank is to be able to understand what people are actually searching for, look at that result, and then be able to uh, go after that based on what you're actually seeing. So if we go to Google, we're gonna do a control shift N and see a unbiased search result as long as you're in Google Chrome. If you're um, on a Mac, by the way, it's command shift N. So if I type in iPhone repair Santa Barbara, an unbiased result, <clears throat> first thing we're gonna see is that iPhone repair, those keywords, iPhone repair Santa Barbara, it's completely taken over the map. You can see there's nobody else even ranking for those keywords because the way I set up this website was to completely dominate the search results by branding the keywords as the actual business name. And that's how you can actually take over like that. For a long time, we had a map pack of three to four other people with ads showing up here. But now, because there's so much authority to this business, it's doing so well because of the way I set it up. And by the way, if you wanna know how I set it up, in my bundle, um, in my local SEO program, which is in the bundle, I actually show you guys how I do this sort of thing with local sites. Either way, going into this, you can see, this is a very hard thing to rank for because it's pretty much dominating the search results. So competition-wise, it's actually a lot harder now that we eyeball it. So that's another thing you need to know about, whether it's Ahrefs, whether it's Google, um, AdWords, Keyword Planner, whatever you're using, just because it says low difficulty doesn't mean that that's true. It might just mean that nobody's competing for it because it's already completely dominating whoever's SEOing for it. So here we can see in this page here, we have about you know uh, one giant ranking here on the maps, one page one ranking here, first position, and then we have some other websites ranking now, one indication that um, it, a local search could be easy to rank for is if you see Yelp or other, you know, uh, aggregate sites ranking really high, meaning like aggregate, meaning, um, you know, where they just have a bunch of these combined listings listed on their website, like Yelp or um, Thumbtack or whatever these different websites are. If those are ranking really high, chances are 
the results are usually pretty easy to rank for. Um, but if we look and see what these different people are doing, look, so one thing you can do is you can type in something called the exact match keywords. Now, if we look up here, we see, okay, 14 times this exact match is showing up on this search result. So it looks like people are SEOing for it. Look, you can see the main keywords here are pulled to the left, which is how you want it. You want your main keywords pulled to the left and you want some sort of call to action on the right. So we can see that they are, a lot of people are following this outline. Look at this. So Santa Barbara iPhone repair, which is just another uh, variation of um, iPhone repair Santa Barbara. Doesn't really matter which way you put it. iPhone repair Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara iPhone smartphone console. We can see a lot of these um, titles are, um, about half of them are truncated and half of them aren't, meaning that the title tags are actually specified too long on these pages. So when you kind of pick apart these different pages, you can kind of see, oh, yeah, the, you know, I could do better than this. Look, the title tag's um, too long. Looks like they're not even targeting the keywords. Look, they don't even have the iPhone repair, Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara iPhone repair at all in this title. So there's different things that you can kind of look at and be like, well, could I improve this search result? And that's really what this comes down to. So at the end of the day, look, obviously if you're trying to rank for something very general, like let's say you're just trying to rank for the keyword cats, you can assume that that keyword's gonna be very competitive because of all the people looking to rank for that. Now, if you're gonna go for something local, like let's say iPhone repair Santa Barbara, and let's say there's, you know, based on your Google Keyword Planner search result, which you can see the searches here, you can see there's 100 to 1,000 monthly searches, chances are there's not a ton of people competing for it. There's about 10 big businesses here trying to compete. So you can kind of gauge that your competition is not insane compared to something that would be more general. Now here's the thing. If your competition is, let's say, you're only competing with 10 main people on Google and you can see, okay, but yeah, these people are probably doing SEO, these people are doing SEO, these people are probably doing SEO, just based on the way they have their website set up, their title tags, their meta descriptions. Um, what you can start doing is looking through these sites and being like, oh, they don't even have SSL. Um, looks like they're not doing any internal linking, they don't have any reviews on the page. I think I could beat this. And this is the exact magic to doing SEO for free. And also to be an expert at SEO is to not only use the tools, but actually go into the search result. And this is what I do all the time. <clears throat> I go into the search result that I'm trying to beat and I go, okay, what are they doing right? And what are they doing wrong? So the whole point of optimizing something is to find what is already working well and making it better, or that's already working not so well and make it better. But either way, you're trying to make what you're seeing show up better than what is already out there. You wanna make it more relevant for the user. You wanna make it look more authoritative to the user and to the um, platform that you're on. So all these things are kind of hard to fake. And so if you're using what Google actually tells you and what I'm actually telling you, which is creating actual value and not worrying about, you know, oh, how many links do I have? How many keywords do I have ranking? What's the keyword difficulty? What's the page authority? What's the, all these things again are ways to quickly measure big exports of content that you can scale. If you have no rankings, you have no clients, you have no income, you can't afford tools, and you have no strategy whatsoever on what you're gonna do in order to generate these leads or be able to market to them or be able to sell them packages because you don't know what your pricing is, all of these things are very important to think about. And that's why my first tip to you guys early on was not thinking about necessarily just the SEO. It was thinking about what is your actual goal? So you wanna think about who do I wanna work with? Why do I wanna work with them? Do I know a lot about that industry? How can I scale that? Who, I'm gonna, who am I gonna outsource? Who am I gonna hire in-house? What am I gonna to have to do in order to maintain these contracts? There's all these things. Once you think about these, and you, you start figuring out what are the things that I can give to my audience as value? What are some ways that I can build authority with these sites? That's when you start winning. Every single SEO success that I've had has not been related to a, even me finding a perfect keyword. What has happened is I will actually go and find what people are interested in. So one thing that you guys will probably see within my Facebook group and with some of the other places that I do my marketing on you'll see that, let me actually close these out. <clears throat> you'll see that I do a lot of polls. So polls meaning, you know, questionnaires on my groups. So I'll ask, you know, what's the best SEO website you've ever seen? What's your favorite SEO course? 
uh, you know, what's the biggest question you have? I ask these questions all the time and it's not because I'm just trying to get engagement. Some groups you'll see, they're just trying to create engagement so they can get more people into their groups so they can sell them stuff. <clears throat> the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm trying to get as much information about my audience as possible because the people I'm marketing to are the people who are trying to learn SEO. That's why I sell programs. That's why I sell consultancy, uh, consultant, you know, packages and because I'm spending my time here trying to market to the SEOs, my biggest goal is to understand why they want what they want. Just like your biggest goal is to figure out, okay, well, if I'm trying to sell to people who want dental SEO, or if I'm trying to sell to people who want web design, why do they want that? What is the big thing around that? I know with SEO people, they want something that's streamlined. They want something that's scalable. They want to know how to get SEO clients. They want to know all these different things that I've learned. And so what I do is I go and I build out checklists. I build out templates that people can actually use. <clears throat> and that's when you get into the principle of the value ladder. And a lot of people already know about this because I talk about it all the time, but ideally what you wanna have is you wanna have about four different steps. And what these are is they're different levels of value. Basically, the higher the value, meaning the higher the money that people have to pay, the more resourceful it is, the, the, the better deal for, um, let's say, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain this. If somebody's paying more money, they get better results. So whether it's with web design, whether you're selling SEO, whether you're selling clothing online, doesn't matter what you're selling, you wanna figure out what is the thing that you can bring people in with? What is the thing that you can capture them with? A lot of people who are watching these videos, a lot of people who are getting my checklist, a lot of people who are talking to me, all of them, started out most likely with some sort of free type of information, some type of free checklist. All, I mean, obviously that makes sense, right? All the people who want this stuff, they are the ones who got in the first place. But what I'm trying to say here is that if you want to sell to people up here, let's say you want to make a bunch of money. Let's say you want to start selling, you know, 2000 to $3,000 SEO packages like I sell them. Then what you want to do is you want to figure out Okay, why would these people be interested in a two to three thousand dollar SEO package, right? And the first thing to do is figure out what do they want for free. What is the thing that's going to blow them away for free? I was talking to this to my girlfriend earlier today, and they actually did a. I think it was like a, I don't I don't think it was a study, but there's a basically evidence showing that um, tribes back when mankind can be tracked back to. Um, they would give the other tribe, one tribe would give the other tribe, um, you know, let's say like a bison or a cow or something. And then let's say this one tribe that gave the other tribe a cow. If that tribe was then in trouble, like 10 years later, let's say they were getting attacked by another tribe, that other, the tribe that got given the cow is going to help the the original tribe that gave them the cow. And, and what that is, is it's called, it's just called the art of reciprocation. So people feel indebted to you when you give them things for free. So when you think about that from a marketing standpoint, the more value you can give up front, the more you get back. And it's usually tenfold. You usually get way more back than you actually end up giving. So the reason why I spend so much time trying to give out free stuff all the time, is because I end up getting it back a lot more. Now, how I turn this into rankings though is because when you have things that are really valuable that are free, you spend most of your time front loading the free things like for instance, this free SEO audit template, this ended up ranking very well because of all the people who actually wanted it. They, they type the keywords in, they, they leave reviews on it, they leave comments, they're searching it, they're linking to it and that's how I get a ton of authority for certain things like the checklist through SEO audits, whatever I'm trying to do and get more traffic to my site which makes it a lot easier to end up selling bring more rankings in, keep building audience, and then that's when you start to get a snowball. Now, one other thing that you need to think about is if you're free, only giving away free. A lot of people go, well, you know, I'm totally fine with giving away a ton of things for free, but I don't wanna charge a lot of money because I don't think it's right. Here's the thing. People are not going to buy from you unless you tell them to. So just like giving things to people for free and then not knowing that you have something for free unless you tell them it's free, they're not gonna know something that you have something to buy unless you tell them to buy it. So all of this is building relationships. You want to figure out, okay, 
you think SEO is this big thing that has to do with you know content and links and all these things, but what it really has to do is it has to do with building relationships. The more relationships you have online basically, the more people respect you and the more people wanna to talk to you and wanna associate themselves with you, the more authority you get, which is basically links or social signals or all the things that matter about SEO. So all the things that used to be faked back in the day that were very easy to fake, like links and reviews and all these things, are now getting harder to do because you wanna have real consistent value. And what I mean by this is Google doesn't just care about you getting 100 reviews or 100 links. Google cares about you getting those consistently. So consistent signals are way better than you know, a one-time signal that you can obviously fake. Now, <clears throat> if you really want consistent signals, the way you do that is you build your audience. So you know, whether it's through MailChimp, whether it's through um, you know, ManyChat, whatever it is, you know, obviously I don't I don't really know a lot of free ways to build a list, like unless you're just taking somebody's email directly from a form and then just feeding it into like a Gmail blaster. So you might have to spend a little bit of money on generating like, you know, on paying for like MailChimp or ManyChat. ManyChat's $10 a month, so it's literally nothing. Um, but that's where you should really start. And so all of your effort starting out for free should be around this whole deal that I'm talking about, really increasing your authority, building your relationships, building the things that you're giving away for free. All of these things are very easy to do if you spend some time thinking about them, thinking about what is already out there that is awesome, but what is something that could be even better? A lot of the time I'll be thinking, I'll be like literally just like playing video games or I'll be out, you know, walking around and I'll be thinking to myself, uh, you know, what is something that I can give out that would be really cool that's not already out there? I'm constantly thinking about that. So when you start kind of like putting yourself in that position where you know something, it, you could create something that's better than that's already out there and that's really unique, people are gonna wanna be around you. They're gonna wanna understand why that is. So, you know, again, I'm not saying completely replicate everything I'm doing, build the SEO audit checklist, go, you know, copy my value ladder, start selling courses. I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you wanna figure out if you're in an industry for a certain thing, why are you in that industry and why are the people in, that industry going to hire you as a you know business. Once you figure that out, then you can kind of think about what is the thing that I can offer them as a unique value that nobody else is currently offering these people. So again, <clears throat> if you go to my website, chaserunner.com, you can go to my free resources here and you can download all these different free things. I'm actually gonna add this other one in there as well, the ultimate SEO resource with all these different learning materials. However, again, as I was telling you guys, if you want to really up um, your uh, results. You want to get results faster. You don't want to beat around the bush anymore. You just want to learn directly step by step what you have to do. I would recommend getting the pro bundle uh, and especially the new local SEO program, which is about really understanding how to manage clients locally, how to rank them locally, how to sell them the service. You know, I do have another local SEO program. And what that other local SEO program is, is just me doing a screen share of me ranking my own website locally, which is pretty cool to see because you get to see step by step everything I get to do to rank that site locally. This is actually about generating the local clients, selling to them, maintaining them, um, doing the work, doing the audit, doing the full scope that you're going to have to do to manage these local clients. So this is way more about the business side of things. And again, if you already have the bundle, you go here, click on this go to the $147 option if you already have the bundle. If you don't have the bundle, go to the $297 option and get it or get the bundle with it. Um, however you wanna do it. But that's pretty much it for today. I'm not gonna show you guys anything like, oh, here's the best keyword tool, here's the best you know, way to do analytics and search console. All of those things take time to learn. You know, you have to learn analytics. You have to learn search console. Either, well, I mean, you don't have to, but you know, obviously they're going to help you with SEO a lot and they take time to learn. Um, in the programs that I have, I actually teach how to use each of them and they're about hour lessons each, but you really wanna start out with the method that I talked about in this video, um, which is value, value, value upfront and worry about building relationships before you build your rankings. That's gonna help you in the long run tenfold. Don't focus on keywords as much as you focus on the actual people that are searching those keywords. Why would they be searching that? And why is the thing that you have a, as a solution for that on a free level? And obviously if you can do it on a paid level as well, why is that more unique or better or, you know, 
why is it something that people would prefer over somebody else that's currently already doing well for that thing? All right, guys, sorry about not talking to you in chat at all. Um, give me a one in chat if what we talked about today made sense, if you guys enjoyed it. Give me some ones. I will bring my face back up so I can kind of read the comments. Sorry, I have it on this screen right here because I actually don't, um, I don't have my other monitor right now, so I'm gonna get that probably today or tomorrow. It's actually Mother's Day today, so I uh, probably will be just staying home because I gotta help make dinner. Oh, we actually just got a payment from Chris Pascal for 147. Looks like he just picked up the new um, local SEO university program. So we will be starting in six days again. Um, once the six days are up, we're gonna close it down. Nobody else can get in, and we're not gonna let anybody else in because we don't want, you know, obviously people coming in late, and then, you know, we're already on lesson three, and people have homework, that kind of thing. I don't want to, um, I don't want to have to confuse the flow. So six days, it's gonna close down. I would get in now while you can. Garnet Banfield also got it. Awesome. Cool. What's up, everybody in chat? We got um, Greg, we got Chip, we got Jeff, Alejandro, Will. You guys have any questions for any of this stuff? Um, let me know. The bundle includes this local SEO course as well. No, so if you already have the bundle, it's 147 on top of it. If you don't have the bundle, then the program, um, the new one is that we talk, we're talking about right now, 297. So if you get both of them together, it comes out to like seven something. <clears throat> Saeed says, hey Chase, uh, one of my friends said his local lead gen site slumped due to COVID-19. I was trying to start a local lead gen site, but he discouraged me and suggest I start after two to three months. And the reason why he's saying this is because Google is not letting you verify your GMB anymore for the moment while COVID's happening. So you have to kind of wait on that. You can still set up your sites though. I'm actually still building out local sites right now. Um, I just can't verify the GMB. You also can't get reviews. So you, you can definitely still do it. Just know that your GMB is gonna be delayed. Darren, what's up, man? I want to get into, just want to hear your feedback on my location, Columbia, but I am from the USA and want to get clients from USA. Do it, man. I'm ranking in all kinds of areas that I'm not actually in, so you don't have to worry about it. Um, LaBlanca says, have you checked out Neil Patel's paid SEO tool? It's a lot cheaper than Ahrefs for us beginners. So I only use two paid tools. I use Ahrefs, and I use Screaming Frog. And the only reason I use the two is because they integrate with each other and I can pump out these huge lists on my spreadsheets that I can uh, basically just get a ton of information for my audits right there and they're all compatible with each other. Ahrefs, Screaming Frog, and I think that's it. Yeah, I don't, I don't pay for anything else besides like hosting and the domain, that kind of thing. Content, I pay a lot for content, but um, there's literally thousands of SEO tools out there. I've literally, I've also created an SEO tool. Um, and I'm telling you that, you know, there's only so much out there that you can learn from, so much information that you can actually actionably use. At a certain point, you're just using all these tools and it just becomes a waste of time. So don't get too caught up in tools. And again, you don't have to use tools unless you have a process built around it. You know, if you get the, the paid SEO template, which is also part of the bundle and part of, um, part of the bundle. Uh, what you can see here is I actually have all of this hooked up with Screaming Frog um, and Ahrefs. So that when, you, when you're actually, I'll, I'll show you the video, you can watch the video for free here on how to use it. Um, when you actually use it, you'll see it just, the, the, the information exports directly into the spreadsheet so I can use this as a way to um, get a ton of data for my clients so I can make recommendations for them. And you know, if, just to put things in perspective, you know, I make about $800 per SEO audit. So for me to spend, you know, $200 per month on Ahrefs and $200 a year on Screaming Frog, but I make, you know, I do two to three audits minimum per month. I make $2,400 off that. It's not a big deal for me. If you're only making, you know, $500 a month total from your SEO clients, you're making none. It doesn't make sense to try to scale that to make it faster. It's better just to do it manually until you get enough demand that you then have to scale it. <clears throat> After doing on-page SEO, what is the best time to do off-page SEO? And to tell you the truth, I don't do off-page SEO. The only thing I do that's off-page SEO is citation building. 
which means you're building your business name, your address, and your phone number for local um, results. But I also do citations for national uh, websites as well, and that's just because it helps build authority faster. I don't think that off-page SEO is really a big thing anymore. I think it used to be a very important, but these days it's just, it's not really a big deal. What's the bundle? I came in late. Uh, again, just go to chaserunner.com. I, you know, I don't want to plug it too much, but if you go to chaserunner.com and then you go to my uh, resources, or sorry, my courses, um, you'll see it under my courses tab on my website. Can you add can you add on a Screaming Frog key to your products? I, I, I can't because I'm not affiliated with Screaming Frog in any way. How do you manage your link building work? Can you uh, share your thoughts on this? I don't do link building. I haven't done link building in three years. I tried it one time after watching a Brian Dean video about three years ago. Uh, if you don't know Brian Dean, he also owns a company called Backlinko. He does a ton of SEO tutorials. Um, I don't think it's necessary. I mean, I, I have crazy results for my clients. In fact, if you go to the new spreadsheet, if you go check it out, and I'll, again, I'll leave the link to this in the description of this video. I'll also link it in live chat really quick. But if you, um, if you look at the new spreadsheet that I made, the Ultimate SEO Resource, you'll actually see I, um, I have a section for my best case studies. And you know some keywords that I ranked for were like bicep workouts, like KD60. Um, none of these keywords that I ranked for ever did I do link building. Uh, Brandon says, you're also sending us to your sites, you audit national SEO through your YouTube. Yeah, so I mean, one of the big strategies as well is if you can get an audience and you can send that audience to your client's websites, it actually ends up helping those websites because a lot of people who do SEO, they're gonna be searching those keywords, clicking on it, just ups your user metrics on those sites. And it's a lot of the reason why I get an initial boost on my client's website. Same thing that Ron Marino does, another SEO YouTuber guy. Andre says, who do I email for the login issue for the bundle? Uh, just email support at chaserunner.com. I think actually I talked to my guy about it. Apparently he put in a ticket to Teachable because there's some sort of weird deal going on. We might just have to uh, set you up with a new email. Greg says, do you plan on doing any courses on affiliate site creation, monetization, and ranking for income? Yes, so I actually have one. Um, it's called the F Affiliate SEO Program. And it's actually an over-the-shoulder view of me going and ranking my um, my affiliate client that I had from zero organic visits a month up to uh, about 20 or 30,000 visits a month, making $50,000 a month um, off of uh, bed reviews. Uh, we actually got them to rank for one of the biggest bed review websites um, on the internet right now. And um, they're killing it. So um, that course is actually about 20 videos. I think it's like over almost like 30 hours of video of me going through and being like, oh, this is why I'm clicking on this. This is why we're adding this content. This is why we're removing this duplicate content. And um, pretty good program. It's also included in the bundle. Himanshu says, should we install Bing Webmaster if we want to rank on Google? Um, I don't think it matters if you want to rank on Google, but you should in in include, um, should install the Bing Webmaster tools uh, so you can rank on Bing. Andre says, okay, cool. Hate to keep emailing you. Um, you always answer my question. Yeah, no worries. It's all good. I mean, especially if you bought the bundle, I don't want you to not have it. So give me a email again and I'll just make sure to forward it to him. Um, set, put in a different email so that we can just set you up under a different email because I think there's a bug on that one for some reason. Greg says, thank you. You're welcome, man. Brandon says, I just installed an affiliate plugin for referrals, recommendations, and for marketers to use. Um, nice. Uh, what is the time schedule for these live sessions. I want to make sure I'm able to attend. So I usually try to do them in the morning about 12 o'clock, 11 to 12 o'clock my time. So mid afternoon or about uh, early afternoon. Um, it's 418 here right now. So about f usually about four hours before this is when I do my streams. When I can't make it, then I'll just do them usually around four. But I don't always have things to say. Um, so I don't always do the streams every day. Uh, so usually around 12, 12 o'clock is when you'll see me. What is the schedule for your local SEO program? I want to make sure I'm able to attend your live session. So once we have everybody in, once the um, signups close after about six days, I'm going to ask everybody what works best for everyone because I know people are on different time schedules. And um, we'll make the classes around who, whatever the time frame is that works the best for everybody. Pedja says, how do you match columns in Screaming Frog with Excel sheets? Um, so originally when I was doing these... Uh, tutorials for Screaming Frog, I was exporting my layout, plugging it directly into the, the template, and then giving you guys the config to use. 
For some reason, Screaming Frog is not reliable with exporting configs, so it's much better just to export whatever config you currently have with Screaming Frog and then reorder it based on what works best for you. But generally, you'll have your URL, the keyword that URL is ranking for, the metrics for those URLs, and then you'll have your Screaming Frog data like your bounce rates, uh, conversion rates, so on and so on. <clears throat> Eduardo asks, how often should the technical issues of a page be checked on for SEO implementation. Um, so I don't spend a ton of time doing technical SEO unless the site already has a ton of traffic. But um, what I'll do is every month I'll do an SEO audit on a website, especially the ones that I'm working with, like for my clients. And I will go through the top pages and look at those every single month. I'll look at the bounce rates, look at the conversion rates, look at the user metrics, click through rates, all these things. That's when you spend time doing technical SEO. Obviously, you're also gonna look at your duplicate content canonicals, all these things that we talk about in the um, in the different programs. Can we get a YouTube course, a YouTube program rather? Thank you, Chase. Um, so I just, I did do sort of a YouTube program. I'd recently did a, two, it's called the 200K SEO program. And what that is, it's actually me showing how I do my setup, how I do my videos. I actually give you guys an auto editing script so you can edit your videos automatically. Um, so yeah, uh, if you wanna check that out again on the site. Um, Cool, so I don't wanna to waste too much of your guys' time. Um, I do appreciate all for being here. There's about 60 of you on here. Uh, if you could leave a like just really quickly, it'd be, help the video get more views. I'd appreciate it a lot. Um, but yeah, uh, if you guys have any other questions, um, two ways to contact me. You can send me an email. It's I'm at chaserunner.com. So letter I, letter M, at chaserunner.com. That's my personal email if you want me to answer any questions for you. Um, if you want to send me a text, if you're in the US, um, I will put my phone number on the screen really quick. But um, I, you know, I, I pretty much respond to all my text messages. If you have something quick, you just wanna say, hey Chase, what's up, what's going on? Um, you know, Thanks for the stream, whatever you wanna say. I usually have time for it via text and I will leave my um, phone number to text on the screen. Um, feel free to call me too. Uh, this is my phone number. I, I try not to be too hard to get a hold of unless it's, um, you know, just a bunch of people asking me weird random questions about you know how do I rank my site higher? That's just too general for me, so please don't ask me that. But um, yeah, thank you guys all for joining me today. I really appreciate you all being here. And uh, look, if you can't buy the courses, um, you know, and you are really in a position where you can only afford free, trust me when I tell you, you don't have to go the paid route. Try to get some results first for your company, for your own self, Use that as a way to start getting into a niche that you wanna work on that's gonna be great for you, not for other people. Don't copy what other people are doing. Try to find something that you know about. Go for that. Once you start making money, then you can start affording tools. Then you can start affording programs. Then you can start affording whatever you need to do in order to streamline what you're doing. But all of these things, tools, programs, all you're, all you're seeing, it's just different ways to kind of streamline and boost what you're already currently doing. If you are at a place where you don't know anything about SEO, and you're really struggling, you know, I have over a thousand videos on this YouTube channel. Go through those first. I show you all kinds of different ways to rank, different things that you can do. Now, if you're at a position where you start making money and you need to take yourself to the next level, then you want to start looking at ways to invest in that. So that's it for today, guys. We'll see you all next time. Until we do, happy SEI. Bye.